Um, our next speaker is uh, Rupin Dang. Uh, he is the CEO of Wilderness Films India Limited, which is also one of our key partners, our media partner uh, for this festival. Uh, Rupin is a mountaineer, he's a botanist, he's a man of all trades uh, within the uh, conservation and, and uh, ecological world here in India. It's a great pleasure to have him here. Uh, he's also, I have to say, for those of you that live in Missouri, he's the man who owns the haunted house, which is also one of his claims to fame. And the, Ruben, well, and the ghost and of the thank mountain thank house, not the haunted house. But I promise to he, put you out of your pain. He doesn't haunt the haunted house. I, he owns. I promise to put you out of your pain very soon. So I mean, everyone must be waiting to want to get out and walk. Um, where do I start? OK, uh, I think I identified that Taki in which Rajashi so showed you, because I'm a sort of bit of everything. I'm a sort of amalgam of a bunch of different interests and traits. And that sort of started out when I grew up in Darjeeling, uh, where I went to school in my early years, and uh, uh, made monthly trips out to Sikkim or Bhutan on either side, and uh, got my first camera gifted to me by the erstwhile king of Bhutan. And uh, those were my early days. And I think those days I defined myself as a butterfly and insect person. So. Uh, in between classes, I was sort of out with my can of Pringles with chloroform in it, and I was with my butterfly net collecting specimens, which I then uh, donated to the uh, Natural History Museum there. Uh, but when I moved to Delhi uh, many years later, after my years in Darjeeling, I sort of missed the mountains, and sort of mountains were clearly not easily accessible from Delhi. So my family got a home here in Lando at that time, and so we've been coming back every month for the last many, uh, more than two decades to Landau, and so Landau has become like our second home, more, more like our first home in Delhi is sort of the in-between times. So we, uh, we've been coming up here pretty often, and uh, using Landau as a sort of base camp for moving up into the high mountains, and we made frequent trips up to uh, uh, many of the high mountains here. In fact, it's been really interesting uh, how Stevens put together so many people, and I sort of identified stories with pretty much everyone. There's been Mr. Chamoli here from the ITBP, whom, with whom I went to Swar in 1990. Uh, Swargrohini is one of the peaks you see here on a clear morning, ladder to heaven, Swargrohini, where supposedly the Pandas went up to heaven from the top of Swargrohini at the end of the Mahabharat. So we were on that expedition uh, back then. And then the following year, 91, I brought an expedition from my college. I was at Dartmouth College in those days in Hanover, New Hampshire. And I took 12 students up to Black Peak, Bandarpuch, which uh, Woodstock has taken a bit of a predilection to in recent times as well. So that was uh, many years back. And ever since then, we've been doing an annual expedition to some peak or the other in the Uttarakhand side. And in the last uh, decade or so, we've been uh, sort of, I've been heading back and sort of gravitating towards where I started out in the Northeast. And we've been doing a lot of uh, expeditions there in Arunachal. And tying in to what our, uh, Rajashi spoke about, I think you mentioned about the macaque which uh, was discovered. Uh, in 98, uh, we were traveling in uh, the Margo area. In fact, we did a crazy expedition as a friend of mine called Omar Kapang. He was subsequently a minister of tourism in the state, uh, in the center, in, in the government of India. He was a bit of a fellow eccentric. So he'd taken us up to uh, uh, the village of, uh, what is it called, Lukthang. And he told us, oh, it's a six hour walk, and uh, you know, just come prepared for a short walk. So we started at six in the morning from, uh, I think, yeah, the Sela Pass. So we came up from Jang, the village of Jang, at 6,000 feet. Went up to Sela Pass at, I think, 11 or 12,000. And then from there, we walked up to the first pass, which was 14 where we encountered snow, and he didn't tell us that we were going that high, so we were all not prepared for that. And then from 14, we dropped to 10,000. And then from there, he made us walk up to 17,000 feet. We had no camping equipment. We had no tents and sleeping bags. He said, oh, it's a four, five hour walk. And so we thought we were going to come back. Then we landed up at 17,000 feet in the middle of October. It was minus something. And it was already 10 at night. And we didn't know where we were headed to. He said, oh, a couple of hours more. Typical Arunachali, typical Himalayan person. They all, it's a couple of hours. Everything's a couple of hours. It's around the bend. So we kept going, and of course, Mr. Apang had his yak to take him along, and we were all walking. So we were up at 17,000 feet and uh, minus something, and we had no flashlight either. Uh, so I think we pulled out an old little pen torch from one of our bags and kept going, and finally reached the village at 4 in the morning after having walked for 22 hours. through. And total altitude and uh, descent and ascent, we did something like 20,000 feet that day. We went from 17, then we dropped to 11, then we landed up at the village at 16.5. 
at four in the morning, and we, when we reached there, the villagers told us we were the first outside people to have ever come to Lukthang village. <laughs> it was a village at 16,500, supposedly the highest electrified village in the world, I think outside of Tibet. And they had a little mini Heidel project there, and there were 16 villagers, and they'd been getting daytime electricity for a couple of hours from that Heidel project. So we landed up there, and we uh, stayed in a tiny little hut with two yaks. We shared with two yaks, and it was four feet high, so we had to sort of bend to get in. And then in the morning when we were getting up, well, we slept at four, we were getting up at six, the chickens were laying eggs from above, from the rafters. So we were sort of collecting the eggs on our way out. That was Lukthang village. And then on the way back from that trek, um, one among many treks of ours in Arunachal, we came across this very strange simian, um, a macaque, which I photographed, and I didn't know what it was. I couldn't place it. At that time, this was, I think, back in 98, I assumed it was a Pear David's macaque which had strayed from Tibet, and it was outside its territory. And so then after I got back, I contacted Dr. Anwaruddin Chaudhary and asked him, and he said, yes, there is this strange macaque which we've been hearing about, and he'd also seen it. And then subsequently, it was discovered and uh, named the Makaka Munzala, which is the only species of simian to have been discovered, I think, anywhere in the world in the last 100 years. I think Rajashi uh, sort of uh, linked into that. So we accidentally ended up discovering this new macaque along the way. So, and, and people then assume that I'm a, uh, I'm a zoologist, which I'm really not because, uh, you know, I've not done any formal zoology training. A lot of people here assume I'm a botanist because I did this book on Himalayan flowers some couple of decades back. So I guess that's why I'm like the Tarkin. I'm a little bit of everything and I keep taking in new things. 